stormy start to this year's UN Climate Control Conference. Leading environmental groups blasted the United States for not signing the Kyoto Accord on curbing greenhouse gases. Washington's representative said the U.S. is doing more than most countries to protect the atmosphere. The Montreal Conference may set the framework for talks on pollution reduction goals after Kyoto expires in 2012. Well, the European Union has endorsed a plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to 30 percent below 1990 levels by the year 2020. Washington says Kyoto is bad for business. Well, joining us now to explore the impasse and other aspects of the climate debate is Paul Toyne, director of Article 13. And according to its website, Article 13 is a team that, among other things, helps businesses develop social responsibility policies and strategies. Dr. Toyne, thank you very much for being with us. Again, this debate continues about whether or not one countries can actually meet the targets that they set up for within these international treaties and two whether or not it's even uh, worth it to have these treaties when the United States doesn't even believe in having an international treaty how um, realistic is it for countries to set such targets well, it is uh, very realistic, and I think what you're hearing from the environmental lobby group is that without setting targets, there's no real, real, real accountability. So, you know, given that we need to stabilise our climate, given that we have increasing amount of pollution, particularly carbon dioxide pollution going into our atmosphere, what is the remedy? What's the solution? How can we ensure we, we, we don't have the... the disasters that we're already starting to experience um, because of the impacts of climate change. The irony of it all is that while this conference is taking place in Montreal, Canada in itself has is, is increased, has not exactly reduced its, its, uh, its target levels, it's increased by some 25 percent. So when we're talking about countries even setting targets, it's not as easy as it would seem. Absolutely no, and they are very challenging targets, and the, the reality is actually even the targets that have been agreed with um, you know, throughout the, the discussions for the Kyoto Protocol mm -hmm. aren't actually tough enough. They're not great enough. We've got to significantly raise the bar if we're actually going to stabilise our climate. Does this, would this bring into, I guess, would this be the right time then to discuss possibly nuclear, nuclear energy, which Britain actually wants to do now, possibly set up its own power stations? But that in itself, that doesn't solve the problem, though, does it? Well, <clears throat> there's a, a debate uh, that needs to happen about nuclear energy, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in the other European Union countries, or indeed in, in America. Um, and, and the issue about that is that um, it's, it's all about fuel security. Mm -hmm. How are we going to be sufficient in our meeting our energy requirements? And how are we going to stabilize this climate? Now, the, the benefits with, with nuclear is that it is carbon zero, so we're not pumping out any, any uh, carbon dioxide emissions. However, there are concerns about the safety. For example, uh, the fuel supply line for uranium, um, the actual plants could be terrorist you know, um, targets, um, and in terms of waste disposal. So all these things uh, you know, need to be discussed, and it's, a, it's about a trade-off. There's a risk here. Alternatively, you can think about renewable energies, such as like hydropower in yeah, America. Yeah, so why aren't countries thinking about renewable energies? And we're talking about wind, mm. uh, wind, uh, tidal waves, sea energy, things like that that are uh, at the disposal of many countries. And yet, why isn't money being used to invest in that kind of technology as opposed to nuclear energy? Well, um, l let's be clear here. Nuclear energy is very expensive, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of um, governments, uh, say, for example, in the European Union, including the UK, have actually said, no, we don't think this is the option, because it means governments will have to pay for it, and actually that means raising taxes, and that means you and me yeah. paying for it. Do we want to do that? Or do we want to go down the route where we're more self-sufficient in our energy from renewables? The problem with renewables is that we haven't invested enough. The technology does exist, but it needs to be transferred at a far higher rate than these be increased investment and then you'll see you know your wind your solar your hydropower your geothermal kicking in but the problem is that in about 10 years time when the energy from nuclear power stations starts to decline we're going to have a gap we're going to have a deficit where we're not going to have enough energy to supply our needs so you know questions need to be raised now actions need to be taken now some hard decisions have to be taken whether we go down a nuclear route where we invest more in renewables or what exactly do we do because the worst case scenario would be having to play catch-up or struggling to find some sort of uh, resource yes but one of the things that will be discussed in Montreal is the uh, opportunity with to, to explore technology to capture carbon mm. and store it 
So, and, and that offers maybe, um, you know, the future really. So we're still using, you know, oil and gas and coal, but we're being far smarter in the fact that we're actually capturing that pollution and not allowing it to go into the atmosphere. So, you know, there's lots of, lots of discussions still to be had on, the, on this matter. Okay, hopefully at some point the discussions will stop and the action will, will follow. That's, That's what's needed.